Hey guys, I'm here playing this game called Prune? Proun? Anyway, I'm not totally sure, but what I will say is this is a racing game that has balls, and hopefully that joke will actually be funny once the game actually gets started. Anyway, this is a pay-what-you-want racing game that just got released last week, and if you want to pay zero, you're uh, totally able to do so. I'm playing the free version right now, but worth noting, if you donate money, you get some extra special bonus tracks. So this is a racing game, and now you understand that balls joke, and I really have to, uh, well, I guess I don't have to, but it's this is an easy game to recommend, let's put it that way. Despite the fact that you can get it for literally zero dollars, it's a racing game that really captures what racing games need to have in order to kind of grab a wide audience and keep them there, and that is a great sense of speed. This game has a fantastic sense of speed, and you're probably able to kind of get a taste for that right now. I'm playing this on the second lowest speed right now, but uh, it takes a while to kind of get used to the higher speed, so I, w I opted to err on the side of caution here as opposed to getting a little bit too grandiose and just crashing into the walls all the time. I haven't even unlocked the highest difficulty yet. Anyway, suffice to say, this is kind of like a Mario Kart type game. So we have our championship mode, aka Mario Kart GP. We have a single race, which allows us to race against the computer or uh, a other player competitors, although not in an online setting. And we have time trials, so we can race our own ghosts. But I haven't gotten that deep into the game to need to do time trials just yet. The game controls as fluently as it needs to. It controls fantastically. And very, very simply, this game has, even though I mentioned that it takes a while in order to get used to the speeds enough to do the, the harder tracks and the higher difficulties, uh, the, the learning curve on this game is basically nil. You only need up, left, and right on your directional pad. Left obviously moves you to the left, and right obviously moves you to the right. Now, the one sore spot that some people might have is that there's not a whole lot of tracks in this game. When you, you play the free version, there's only, I believe, something like five tracks. You start with three, but then as you uh, beat the higher difficulty championships, you start to unlock uh, bigger and better tracks. But I think there's only five in the game, and plus you get a bonus one when you pay. When you pay anything, it could even be a dollar. Another thing I'd like to mention about the game is that it's really visually striking. Like, this level is probably not the best example of it, but it still gives you a certain sense of speed and scale. Like, this is a game that looks on like no other. Oh man, I'm so pissed off right there. I just got passed at the last second uh, in order to come in second in this race. And coming in first, second, third, fourth is important when you're doing a championship because it obviously affects your placement and whether you quote unquote actually beat the level. And what you saw there was the game pulling some high scores from the internet and I uh, am pretty, pretty novice at this game compared to a lot of people. So this is the second track in the Sonic Championship, and this one is probably the most visually striking, but it's also the one that I am the worst at. And here is where the game sort of starts to get on some really cool track designs, like this one. Kind of reminds me of if, as if I was driving my ball through pencil shavings or something. But anyway, things like this. Looks like a prog rock album cover come to life. So anyway, as I mentioned, this is a really easy game to recommend for a lot of reasons. One, visually beautiful. Two, fantastic sense of speed. Uh, three, I haven't even mentioned this yet, but great music. The only real knock I can give, I mean, I, it's hard to give it a knock considering the, the price is right on this one, uh, is that you know, maybe there's not a whole lot of depth to it, but maybe that's something that's going to come in further updates, although I can't say that with any kind of authority. What I will say is that I think it was a pretty goddamn genius move to release this game under your pay-what-you-want model. This game got a lot of buzz last week. And considering it's not on Steam, at least not on Steam yet, uh, this is the type of indie game that could have just fallen off the radar, but thanks to that buzz that they got from this pay-as-you-go business, they've actually uh, hopefully drummed up a lot of business. You can see there's something like 3,000 races today, so I hope, I hope people are picking up this game, uh, and I hope they're actually throwing down some money for it, which sounds a little bit hypocritical because I'm playing the free version right now. But that was just what was convenient for me at the time. I will definitely be picking this one up with a certain monetary donation coming soon. I want to talk a little bit about the pay-what-you-want model for video games, because this seems something that is becoming a little bit more and more popular uh, after the Humble Indie Bundle proved it was such a success. I think this is a, a really good way for indie games that might otherwise go unnoticed to actually get their name out there. And the weird thing is, when you give people the option to pay what they want, it seems to be that the general sentiment is people are happy to throw you a few bucks. But if you tell them what they have to pay, they're going to be much more likely to pirate it. So it seems like this is a good way for indie developers to not only get some good buzz on their games, but also for them to ensure that the customer base that's interested 
also actually throws down some cash for it. And of course, the customer feels good about it as well because they feel like they're doing something out of the goodness of their heart. So that was a pretty piss poor run for me. But let's go here onto the third track, and this is by far my favorite track. Another thing I've failed to mention so far is that the music is really goddamn good. Uh, what little there is in the game, actually, but still, uh, it's really well constructed, and it doesn't necessarily go with the tracks. I mean, this is not like a one, two, three, kick and drop that beat like an ugly baby type game or an audio surf, but you know, it adds to the ambiance. And I'm kind of sick of those procedurally generated or generated based on the tone and tempo of your music games. I've already got enough of them. They serve as a a good gimmick and a nice way to listen to my music collection. What I want here and what we've got here is just a really good racing game. One thing that was a little bit disappointing for me is you can see that there's a lot of other balls in the track here and they're controlled by the AI. Uh, what I really kind of thought before I played it was that these balls would all be solid objects so that I could like bump into them, not knock them off the track, but at least kind of obscure them in a, you know, rubbing is racing Days of Thunder style fashion, but really they're, we're all transparent and ethereal, so you can basically just drive your ball through anybody you want. Sounds like uh, someone's wet dream. Anyway, this is the final race of this championship, so you know, win, lose, or draw, this will be the last race in this video, and I'm actually doing a pretty terrible job right now, but hopefully on this level you're getting a good sense for the kind of scale and aesthetically pleasing design that the levels have. They're really, really striking. Uh, the first time I played the game, I was kind of blown away. I expected it to be a little bit more simplistic. I mean, naturally, when you have a game where someone says, you know, pay what you want, and you could even pay nothing for it, you just assume that it's going to be... You know, the gameplay could be fine, but it's probably going to be shoddy on the intangibles, things like graphical quality and style. This is not the case with this game. Certainly it has that in spades. And this is all a game developed by one man, and I forget his name, but it is incredibly Dutch, so I probably wouldn't be able to pronounce it properly anyway. Anyway, you guys can all check out his name for yourself when you go to the link in the video description, which is going to direct you to the website. Again, I'm not going to go out here and say, you know, you should donate $10 and pick up this game. Pick up the game for free, and if you feel that you like it and you feel like it deserves your cash, then put down some money for it. That's, that's the way the industry should be working, at least with indie games. Pay with the goodness of your heart. If you feel it deserves it and if you feel you can afford it, then reward good work however much you feel it deserves. Anyway, as we come out here, I almost executed one of the greatest comebacks in Prown history. But unfortunately, I kind of fell off at the very, very end. So, this has been Let's Look at Prown. In case you couldn't tell by the way I was gushing over it the entire game, I strongly encourage you all to at least check it out. There is literally no reason not to. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. See you later.